previously on the Arius Adventures. My biggest concern is we walk through that portal and Jarvu is there. We could find uh, a super powerful weapon that I call Dibs. Dibs. So you've got, uh, like before, you have three doors. I kick it in. 10 out of 10 style points. So this time, however, the interior looks like a very familiar building, uh, in- inside building for Garrus. Oh. So what you see is uh, your mother standing over a table. You catch yourself because you realize this was the night your clan was slaughtered. This was the last night you saw your mother alive. Oh. Garrus hearts just drops. Take this and make sure Garrus gets it before anything happens and make sure he gets out of the area as quickly as possible. Yeah. That was the last time I saw her. I think I think she'd be proud of you. When you step into this room, you are caught off guard by the smell of blood. You find a room that looks like a small hunting lodge. And a duck's and she shakes her head and she's like, I want to see them again. You see three men all coming in very loud. And then the second guy has uh, the scruff of a much smaller fox cub. And you guys have just seen Roisin's death and rebirth as a Clementus. Garrus just kind of like holds her, kind of like a, a hug. I wish I could have done more. So opening this door, you see a group of huddled children. One of the kids looks up towards you guys and gasps and just goes, oh no! Oh no, I know what this is. As soon as Feora realizes, hears that voice, she drops to her knees. And I promise I'll get you guys a really good head start so you can run away to the next town, okay? You see young Feora lead those kids out of the room. And that night is the night that forever changed Feora's life. I couldn't even save those little kids. We're gonna go find your dad, and we're gonna go kick his ass. I mean, if we could take down Jarvu, I think we can take down your dad. No offense. I don't think he's like a dragon slayer. And if we can't take down Jarvu, we're dead, and we don't know how any worries. I know Adam doesn't remember what happened last time because he doesn't I remember. To... What, what happened last time, Adam? Um, we went through doors. We saw, if I remember correctly, Garrus and Roisin uh, pass. And then we all thought about if we should either stay and explore like the terracotta area or if we should go into the portal that we unlocked after doing the chromatic ja- dragon puzzle. God damn it, he got it. Ooh, drop the mic. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't listen to it. It's because I lived it, Cassie. I lived it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Well, I'm used You're to- You're going to keep this you... in, right? Sure, <laughs> if that's what you want. Yeah, thank you. When, I, when we do the opening recap that I usually do, we'll just- keep this part in yeah, so there was a very yeah. sad moment with <laughs> Rasheed's past that I'm pretty sure made a lot of people cry because the music set with it <laughs> oh it was wonderfully scored by Wander <laughs> <laughs> so he provided the scenes for or the music for all three of those scenes with Garrus, Rasheed and Feyora's rooms yeah. yeah I love them oh Feyora's the other one yeah I know there's yeah. another one so I think we left off with just after finishing up Feyora's room and yeah, I know we jokingly said like the sanctuary rumbled and stuff, but that really didn't happen. I was just fucking with y'all. Oh, okay. But, <laughs> but yeah, so the group after visiting those three rooms, uh, I would, I'm guessing it's a little bit somber between uh, Garrus and and Roisin and Feora. So you guys make your way back out into the main sanctuary room. And now you're left with two, one of two choices. Do you, what, what, well, I mean, do you go check out the terracotta room? Are you taking the new, the new book with you all? 
Um, are you stepping through the mirror? I think I described on the other side of it, it looked like it was like a cavern with a river of lava. Yeah. Big spicy place. <laughs> yes. So now the question is, is what will y'all do? Will you do some more exploring? Will you rest? What? What's the plan? I think we were going to rest? Or were we going to explore and then rest? Yeah, that's up to you. You all, I, we also discussed possibly getting out of here. How is that going to happen? Plane shift. True. Alrighty. <laughs> Roshin just <laughs> looks around, shrugs. Well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we can we can look around some more. If we do, though, um, I kind of have a request. If we can take some time, I would like to change Kel into something a little bit more suitable. Scary. <laughs> oh, we're not a fan of the buzzard anymore? The vulture? We're done with that? We've had him for well, like two I mean, episodes. Listen, we, I didn't know we were going to get out of the desert area. Kyle just goes, Bleh, falls over. <laughs> a boulder I mean, dropped on Kel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, this is the only time Kells actually technically didn't die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, going good so far. Good record. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say so. Uh, so, are we resting, or are we gonna continue? We'll or... take your time to uh, make w Kel whatever he's gonna be now, but I think we should probably t look around and then take a short rest. Yeah, it yeah. couldn't hurt if they were offers. We can look. We can look around and and then and then take a break, and then I don't know. Whatever we do after. Sounds good. What do you think, Tagoro? Are you still uh, uh, bloodthirsty for our Jarbu? Oh yeah, I'm, we're gonna kick his ass. <laughs> Bitch. Those are those are bad words. I admire your confidence, Tagoro. Only if you don't follow through. Wait, what? Well, I'm gonna <laughs> sit down and work on Kel. <laughs> Manny spots a squat and just starts doing the ritual for Find Familiar. So what are we getting this time, Manny? A little black cat. Fantastic. <laughs> Watch this thing immediately die. <laughs> Alright, little buddy, yeah. Uh... Why don't we start? <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, why don't we start with the downstairs area? So where the terracotta statues were before? Sure. Okay. So are you sending Kel ahead? Oh, yeah. All right. I give him little scrunches. All right, cutie. Go ahead. <laughs> kind of wobbles down. <laughs> quietly. Stealthily. This is fantastic. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So Kel goes down those back stairs and are, I assume you're doing the whole like looking through his eyes. Uh, yeah. I hold on to whoever's nearby. To All grow. Right. Or to grow you're on Manny duty again. Hell yeah. <laughs> Manny have you have you papoosed him yet? Like, is that still a, or is that still? No, because oh. I feel like this isn't going to take that long, so he's okay. not papoosed. But right. it is out and ready to be uh, to be he's, used. He's prepared. God, just holding it at the ready. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right, so uh, Kel quietly pads and scampers his way down into the lower chamber and it takes a few minutes as your eyes adjust through his into the darkness and you see the outlines of those um those statues once more only the difference is is this time there's not as many hmm sir okay i think before i said there were like what 50 yeah think so um so we'll say there's probably about half 
Hmm. Still standing in place. Concern meme intensifies. <laughs> and that fountain uh, that stood before it uh, last time, that strange fount with like the runes coming down at the base and leading across the ground towards the, the statues themselves. The fount is split in half and broken. And uh, go ahead and have Kel make a perception check. Well, that's a natural 19, and I think it's plus one, so uh, modify 20. Not bad. So what you and Kel notice, and through Kel's senses you even smell that old rusty smell of iron, and you see blood stains on the floor uh, that look like blood was poured into that fount something happened and now it's stained upon the floor and the fount is cracked in half Mm. okay i call kel back okay so he comes back to me instantly and i snap out of it uh there's a kind of a mess over there a lot of blood and some of the soldiers are not there anymore oh there were soldiers before feora asks yeah, like uh, these terracotta orc soldiers. Okay. That doesn't sound good. Where do statues go when they're not statues? That is a great question. <laughs> Maybe they broke? Uh, did Kel see any, like, footprints or anything like that? Mm, yes. Okay, well, I did see footprints, so maybe the blood and the fountains all connected maybe woke him up um did you see any movement down there i don't think so do you think it's safe to go check it out in person manny kind of looks concerned Uh, i don't know if we do i'd probably cast pass without a trace so we're extra stealthy well hold on let me go check something and garris goes to the front of the entrance Mm -hmm. and he's going to cast uh detect good and evil okay um or uh divine sense but what does divine sense do uh as an action you can detect good and evil until the end of your next turn you may sense anything affected by the hollow spell or the location of any celestial fiend undead within 60 feet that is not behind total cover you can use uh this feature six times uh per long rest you also detect the presence of any place or object that has been consecrated or desecrated okay so i can tell you this with your divine sense um okay. you don't detect anything good or evil but you do detect that Something down there was desecrated. Alrighty then. And it could be safe to assume that perhaps that fount, since it's destroyed, might have something to do with that. I don't detect anything down there, so that's a good sign. Should we head down there? Good. I'm I'm down if y'all down. I go down. Okay. I I follow and I cast. I cast Pass Without a Trace. Alrighty. Anyone Onward. around me, uh, so it's anybody within 30 feet of me. We just okay, get a cool. plus 10 to our stealth. Okay. Wow! Um, I'm going to have the brothers. We'll say that I think it's what? Koth is still out, unconscious, yeah. resting. So Roran's going to stick by his side. So that way you have Feora still going with you. All right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, so you guys all head down the stairs with Tagoro leading the way. Again, it's really, really dark, unlike before. So if you have low light vi- or if you have like dark vision or anything, that allows you to see. If you don't have it, then it is pitch black for you. I, I see. All right. I think we all have dark vision. Okay. I wasn't sure who had what, so. I'm um, just making sure. Yep. Yep, I'm good. Already, me and Roshin got 120. Yeah, nice. Yeah, Garrus has dark vision. Feyor, everyone has dark vision. Yep, sweet. Okay, Manny rolled a stealth check and got a five. All right, buddy. 
Oof. Well, a 15. A 15. Oh, okay. That's true, because it's a plus 10 with the, the thing. Mm hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh... I have to roll two because of disadvantage. Oof. Oh, yeah. Well, I rolled a. Wait. I also rolled a 15. <laughs> uh, 15. Same as Mary. <laughs> God. I also got a 15. That means we all rolled a 5. <laughs> Adam, yeah. our, our, Adam, is Tagoro going in stealthy? There he is. <laughs> Alright. Damn. Hey, 28. look at that badass. <laughs> uh, so... Tagoro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's gone. So... Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> you lose him in the darkness. <laughs> So, yeah, you guys all see more up close and personal what Manny described. Uh, the room is half empty now. Half the terracotta statues are gone and the fount is broken. For the three of you who were here before, you notice out of the ones missing, the big one that stood at the front and center of the group is also gone. Well, that's a good um, sign. Or a bad sign. One big one missing and... Some of the little ones. I think one might be the chief. I mean, it might be just a stat. It's just statues, Mandy. It's not like it's real. Oh, where did they go? Did someone take them? Maybe. But only half of them? And left a lot of spooky blood for no reason at all? Yeah. Um, and it's kind of fucking Manny, weird. Manny will summon the staff to him and tap it to detect magic. Can I make like an investigation check, maybe? You can. Okay. Ooh! Alright. So while you're investigating, Manny, you're detecting magic, so I'll start with you first. Um, you detect faint lingering traces of magic left over from the fount. It seems like that was magical. But with it being destroyed, it seems like the enchantments around it were also damaged and messed with, with its destruction. Can I get a read on what kind of enchantment it could have been? Like, it, is it seems like or... one, of the, one of the spells, uh, one of the magics, let me double check what type this one is. So this is, one of them is a necromancy spell. And you recognize this one as life transference. And that is a spell that will give health from one creature to another. So like you would give up part of your vitality and life force to heal or uh, vitalize some, revitalize somebody else. Many, uh, does say that out loud to everybody. Yeah. So this is pretty dark magic. Huh. So. But it's pretty weak, so I don't think it's gonna hurt us in any way. Okay. Maybe we just don't touch the big <laughs> scary blood. Yeah, I don't think we should add blood or take anything. No. That would be <laughs> very bad. That would be... We look over and Tagoro is just yeah. like lifting a statue up. Just like, huh? <laughs> you mean like this? <laughs> so, uh, Fiora, does anything look familiar about these guys? Uh, Fiora walks up to one of the remaining statues and she looks at it. She's like, I mean... They kind of are dressed like, you know, my father's warriors. They look like Steel Thunder orcs. But uh, why the fuck would something like this be in a weird mirror place? Maybe your dad was doing, doing some spooky stuff. I mean, he is also a warlock. Wouldn't put him past him. But I just... I've never, I don't remember him turning people into stone before. Maybe this is new. Apparently. 
Uh, Garrus, while they're talking and figuring stuff out, and you're investigating, you notice that the footprints where the statues would be placed at, like where the empty spots of the statues, you see that the footprints leave the spots from where those statues were once standing. Okay. Can I tell if they're like fresh or are they old? Um, I will say with your uh, your check that they look recent. Hmm. Concern intensifies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Manny, do you think it would be a bad idea for me to cast light in here? Uh, I mean, we could. Where are the where are the foot tracks leading towards? Are they leading like out or? It seems like those footprints lead from where the statues were each stationed, and then they lead up those stairs you guys came from. Mm. Yeah, then I would say it would be fine to turn on the light, maybe. Okay, Garrus uh, holds his emblem on his uh, chest, and he's just like folded. Show me the light, and just a big thing of light just spawns for me. Alrighty. So as you do that, the light lifts up and hangs over the chamber, so you guys can see the full size and scape of this room. And it's a really large cavernous chamber, uh, besides just this immediate area. You see it's very craggy and stony, and along the edges... You guys see some movement. Oh. Hello? Um, you see two, four, six, six pair of glowing eyes stacked on top of each other, peering uh, from like a dark crevice. And whatever it is backs away as the light uh, fills the, the cavernous room and it tries to like back up a little bit more and remain hidden and hunched. Mm. Uh, what the frig? We'll be right back after a quick break. Hi, I'm Chris Guthrie, and I'm the host of the Rule for Equality podcast. We're an LGBTQ plus and woman-led show that uses history for character inspiration by telling stories about badass historical people and how to make them into a PC or NPC for your campaigns with class, race, and background suggestions. We also do interviews and discussions about our experiences as women at the game table, social issues, and advice to help give a platform to women and non-binary players of every variety. There are plenty of laughs, drinks, hijinks, and more here at Rule for Equality, and we would love for you, however you identify, to come join in the fun and camaraderie. The Rule for Equality Quality Podcast. Give us a listen on major podcast platforms and happy adventuring. Is this thing on? Can't you see the red light? God, how bad are your eyes? I can see the red light, but no one said to talk. Hi, I am Marie Redgate, and um, this is... Angus McRae. And we uh, fight monsters, because those are real. The boogeyman that you fear, they're real. That thing under your bed is also real. But we're here to fight them. Kick their ass, but, you know, that's close enough. Do you even literally think we should be doing this? I mean, who would believe a couple of uh, monster hunters from a little town called Hendrix, which we're stuck in, thanks to you? Thanks to me? I would have been gone a long time ago if I still had a car. But I guess you shouldn't have drove it off a bridge. We interrupt this bickering to inform you that we are Red Gate and Wolf, an actual play Monster of the Week podcast. Wait, wait, wait. Why, Why is it Red Gate and Wolf? Should not be Wolf and Red Gate. I do all the work, and as she talked about kicking ass, I do that. You wouldn't be able to go anywhere to kick ass if I didn't drive you there. Drive me. You drive me crazy. Find us on your favorite podcast app now. Greetings, listener. I'm your community innkeeper, Ginger, here to talk to you about our sponsors. Our first sponsor are our friends over at Awesome Dice. They have you covered for all your dice and dice accessory needs, like these really cool Thunder of Dragons hollow metal dice. From metal and gemstone to their specialty dice, you can easily find the right set to give you the advantage on your next game session. Make sure to visit AwesomeDice.com to use the special discount code ADVANTAGE10 to get 10% off your next purchase. Add more dice to your collection with Awesome Dice today and gain the advantage in all your rolls. Next up are our friends at Elderwood Academy. 
They have all you need to add to your D&D gaming experience. They create beautiful hex chest dice boxes, dice trays, dice towers, and many other unique products in their store. I like to use the Codex Dice Tower to roll all my fireball damage into my scroll rolling tray. You can find all their epic accessories and more at elderwoodacademy.com. Get your Codex Dice Tower today and let them know Party Advantage sent you. We also want to thank our friend Nim Toast Hater for the use of his amazing homebrew content and items in the show. You can find him all over social media, including Twitter, Field, and his own Discord server by following the links in the episode description. And now, we're on Patreon! Want to gain even more party advantage? Support us on Patreon and gain access to regular behind-the-scenes content, special interviews with the cast, exclusive Discord channels within our server, ad-free episodes, and so much more. Don't miss out on all the fun! Roll initiative! And finally, make sure to check us out on all the social media for more Rampact fun. You can find us on Twitter and Facebook using at Party Advantage and on our own website, PartyAdvantagePod.com. And now, back to the episode. Do, do we see this? <laughs> yeah, you do. You can't quite make it out because it's like huddled over and trying to back away from you guys and remain hidden. Where do we see? I don't see nothing. Right there. I haven't posted the picture yet because it hasn't fully come out mm-hmm. of its little hiding spot. Uh, Roshin is going to take a couple steps towards it. Okay. Very carefully. Just mm-hmm. like... Mm, hi. You don't gotta be scared. The uh, six eyes blink at you, uh, uncertain, and you hear kind of like a weird chittering sound. Wait, this thing has six eyes? Yes. Uh, Spider. Rashid, can you back up? Uh, that's not a good idea. <laughs> oh, man. Spiders. You, you Spiders. Guys, yeah, you guys freak out, and the creature like makes another like uh, screeching, chittering sound as it backs up from you guys. Hey. As- what if they're like me? Well, you have two eyes. This has six, so <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, already very that's different. The normal, normally normal thing about me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you also have two legs, two arms, a head. Uh, we you don't have know the, the anatomy of this. number of appendages. And you don't make a chittering sound. I believe it's like, or something like that. I'm sure I could do that if I wanted to. Can you not? <laughs> <laughs> uh, R- Roshin's gonna keep moving forward, just very, very carefully. I mean, yeah. I didn't detect good nor evil about mm-hmm. it, so it's neutral at best. <laughs> it's okay. We're just we're just kind of scared too. And he kind of yells out, "Are you a friend or foe?" It screeches again and and backs away. Oh, God, <laughs> I hide with the coral. I pull out food. Okay. I'm gonna do the Tagoro method. I pull out food and I just lay down, and start eating it, and put it like in a little pile in front of me. <laughs> so you do that uh, Manny's being a puss and Roshin are you still approaching? Yeah I rolled a natural one for hiding behind Tagoro so that's a 15 Jesus Christ <laughs> So you're just ducked you're just ducked behind his shoulder <laughs> as he's just sitting on the ground now <laughs> So Roshin as you get closer you see like long clawed feet uh, just the really gangly limbs uh, two pair of hands are clutching tiny stone looking daggers uh, other two pair of hands are you know kind of pawing at the rocks trying to hide itself even more mm-hmm. into the crevice hey. when you see these like mandibles on its face kind of like nervously chittering it's okay so long as you don't try to hurt us we're not gonna hurt you uh, go ahead and make a persuasion check, and you can roll with advantage with Tagoro setting out his, like, food trap. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is 27. All right. So it blinks again and uh, it slowly become it slowly starts to emerge from the shadows and you guys see Okay, you guys see this. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh mm-hmm. Hi. <laughs> That's not normal. <laughs> yeah, well neither am I. <laughs> So it's about it's about like four feet tall, really thin and and fuzzy. Roshin takes off her mask and like pulls down her hood, and she's like, "Look, I have a kind of spooky too." Yeah, the, uh, the the creature blinks its eyes again and kind of like takes a little hesitant step forward towards Roshin. The creature looks at you and goes, Jesus Christ, and tries to kill you. <laughs> uh, Roshin's gonna hold a hand out to him. Hold a, hold a hand out to the fella. <laughs> Alrighty. It reaches out one of its hands and takes another step closer till it's standing right in front of you and gently kind of like brushes its fingertips against yours and then when it feels that cold feeling it kind of retreats back a little bit but still blinking curiously at you that's okay as it chitters we're not gonna hurt you right guys it looks behind you to the other four (laughs) I'm still hiding I'm indifferent Tagore is confident he can kill it in one hit, so he's not. <laughs> Jesus <good>. Christ! <laughs> um, I have a corruption actually. DM, I had mm-hmm. said in the last or a couple of episodes ago that I had cast tongues, and oh. I had I meant to say I cast comprehend languages. Okay, okay. Because that, tongues tongues doesn't make me able to read. It only allows me to hear. It would be com- Okay, yeah, comprehend languages. Got it, got it. All good. So, would that be still going? It lasts an hour. An hour? I would say... Hmm, I would recommend casting it again if you can. Well, I can't understand what this thing is saying, but it would take me about 10 minutes to understand it and I'd probably have a conversation with it. I mean, he seems to understand what we're saying, generally. <laughs> what are you doing here? Uh-uh. It uh, looks from you guys to the fount and the, the remaining statues. Uh, his eyes dart fearfully up the stairs and then he points back to the little uh, crevice he was trying to hide in. I think he was scared of whatever was going on. Okay. Bad things went upstairs. It nods its head. Are you here all alone? I mean, other than the bad things. Yeah, he tilts his head and thinks a moment. And then uh, nods again. Hmm. Friends? Does he have friends? Yeah, do you, do you have friends? No? Yes. Shakes his head. Oh, Aww. that's bad. How long were you, have you been down here? Uh, he blinks again and kind of gives a, a shrug. <laughs> he doesn't know. Were you here when we were here last time? Uh, he looks at you confused, like he doesn't understand that question. Okay. Um, he understands quite what we're saying. I mean, I think he has a general knowledge, but I think harder questions are going to be a little bit He also more probably doesn't know how to answer. Right. Harder question. Tagore looks at him and goes, click clack, hungry? <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he chitters and... And looks curiously at the food. I take a bite of, like, the beef. Like, I don't know, I probably have, like, beef jerky or something. And I, like, hold it out to him. <laughs> like, come on, not poison. Can I understand what language he's speaking? Uh, um, I don't think you have under common. Dang it. No, I speak infernal. I was about to say, if it's, what do I have, uh, abyssal. 
He does not speak abyssal. I, I speak orc. Does it understand orc? It does not, Adam. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, it was in a room full of like orc statues, wasn't it? Yeah. That yeah, doesn't so it, mean Adam. Well, just he was Adam. <laughs> oh, hey, Cassie, if that stands to reason why you would think that I. You're being mean. I get one inspiration dice. That's not how it works. <laughs> you don't get to decide that. <laughs> I do too, and I decided. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Everyone Adam... but Becky gets one. <laughs> oh, stop it! <laughs> really? <laughs> Uh, no, it does not speak, uh, orcish. That's all you had to say. Okay. You didn't have to hurt my feelings. All right. What was, uh, the wizard's name that we killed last time? That was in here? Ezra's. Easy. Oh, Ar Azaris. Yeah, yeah. Azaris. Azaris. <laughs> Sorry, Azaris. Got it. Yes. Azaris uh, Iranator. Okay. I say Azaris. Do you know him? Did he put you here? The creature, as soon as you say Azaris, he like punches down and starts sh shaking all over. Mm -hmm. I go over to him and I offer my hand. He looks at you a moment and then shyly reaches his hand out towards yours and lightly brushes it. Oh, I take off my gauntlet so it's just my regular hand. Uh, when you take off your gauntlet and you hold out, like, and he sees, like, your real hand, he blinks in confusion <laughs> and he snatches your gauntlet out and starts looking into it, confused. <laughs> yeah, it's a long story. Sorry about that. <laughs> He's curious. So, what are we gonna do with this little guy thing? Well, hopefully Manny can talk to um, this person and see uh, what he knows. He obviously is reacting to uh, the wizard that was here last time. So mm. he's our oh. new friend. <laughs> Wait, so... didn't we make a rule about not meeting any new friends down here? We have uh, Roshin. It's kind of going to happen. Okay. Well, think about it. Look at it. He's skinny. Little dark fur, like covering him, and he has daggers. Probably like a rogue or something. And we lost our rogue. The party acquired a rogue. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! Adam. He's scared and alone. Can't Is there blood on those here? daggers, Cassie? Do they look like they've ever been used? Oh my God. They look like they have, but not recently. Mm, yeah, my boy's a killer. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm still trying to get him to eat because Tagoro's really curious if he's going to eat normal or be like a real spider person and like ingest it with like digestive fluids and suck it dry. Like, he really needs to know that because that will also god. confirm if you trust him or not. Okay. Same. So, Same. <laughs> all right. God. He keeps like putting new things in front of him, like an apple, jerky. All right. Kitten. So, <laughs> are we are we wanting to talk to this creature? Yeah, it's up to you guys. I know. Black I kitten. <laughs> Black kitten, Adam. So, so as you guys wait the ten minutes for Manny to be able to cast this, as he works on getting ready to cast the comprehend language spell, the creature finally makes his way over to Adam's little or Tagoro's little food pile and picks up one of the pieces of beef and um, you see, let's see, instead of bringing it straight up to its mouth, it holds the piece of beef up towards its stomach and you see this uh, webbing start spinning from its stomach and it wraps up the meat and everything and to this little like meat uh, web pocket and that's when, after it's, you know, completely covered, it brings it up to its mandibles. And you see on either side, those sharp mandible fangs clamp down on the pocket and it starts sucking at the, the meat inside. Oh, not cool. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time he's eating his little meat juice pouch, his eyes are all like blinking and watching you guys curiously and, and 
you know, still a little hesitant and afraid. I'm Roisin. It chitters in its little language. Yeah. <laughs> uh, once the little, once he's done with his, that one bit of meat, it blinks and, and points to the, the pile again and looks tentatively at Tagoro, if, almost like asking if it could have another. Oh yeah, I, I, I love it. I'm going to take one of those like pestilent things that you know you grind I'm gonna do that to some meat. oh okay so you're gonna... I'm gonna i'm gonna try his way you know what <laughs> goro doesn't shame anyone for eating you're gonna make this yourself is the right way make yourself a little meat tartare <laughs> so yeah tagore's gonna add a little bit of water and to the like meat and like grind it up like a soup and or a paste and just start sucking on it that's fucking gross Tagoro doesn't judge. All right. Well, it's not going to taste that. I mean, I guess if Tagoro likes raw, wet food, congratulations, you made cat well, food. So, you. as you finish grinding up your wet meat paste, uh, Kel is over by your side, sniffing at it now. I will eat you. I swear to God, I will. <laughs> he looks at Kel, and then he looks at the spider monster, and then he looks at Kel. You look at the spider monster. Don't even think about it. <laughs> what? Man, he's just looking at his book, not even making eye contact with him. He's just like, <laughs> down, doing the spell. Don't, Don't even. Don't. <laughs> so, so, girl, you can decide whether you like wet meat paste or not. I think that sounds fucking gross. And I know real life, you hate steak, so. Yeah, Tagora <laughs> loves all food. I'm, I'm going to roll a uh, d6. Even yes, odd no. Okay. No. Not for Tagoro. <laughs> well. I tried, though. Alright, so you have a bowl of wet food. Uh, you've got Give the cat. Now. Yes. Give it to Kel. <laughs> Alright. So, Manny, you finally finished casting the spell, so now you have comprehend languages, so you can try and communicate with this creature. As it finishes up its third little webbed meat sandwich thing. All right. Uh, this is going to be weird. I'm going to be able to talk to you now, okay? And I'm going to kind of slowly ease into his language. Okay. Uh, sorry, before we start, does this guy trust Garrus at this point? Um, I mean, like, he's friendly with you guys. He hasn't attacked anyone or eaten anybody. Okay, so would Aura of Courage kick in with him? If you see him as an ally. Uh, it says you and friendly creatures within 10 feet. Okay, yeah. Right I mean, if, if you assume he's friend, if you believe he's friendly, um, he hasn't he hasn't done anything to indicate otherwise. So if you want to give him that little bit of courage, then I'll allow it. Yeah, it's just like a constant thing around me. Okay. Alrighty. Yeah, he seems to calm. And Manny, go ahead and ask your question again. Awesome. Uh, so Manny gets up, goes to him and says, So, uh, what's your name, pal? It blinks at you a moment as it realizes you're starting to speak in its tongue. And it uh, takes a moment and he, he says, and Name is Crunch. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I turn to the group. This might be a very bad idea. What? <laughs> well, his That's name is Crunch. Um, well, that's a cute name. Sure. Right, it's adorable. Crunch. <laughs> well, uh, Crunch, do you know about how long you've been down here? Crunch has been here a very long time. Long time. Okay. Um, what do you know about that wizard? He took me and others from our home and brought us here and hurt us and did mean tests to us and make some of us fight in his arena against his students well um okay but he's not here anymore 
and his dragon is free now and is in charge. Yeah, I guess you could kind of blame us for that. Both parts. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, do you... Do you remember maybe possibly how that wizard trapped Jarvu? Mm -hmm. He had Jarvu before he had us. How how do you control a creature like that? You don't control Jarvu. Jarvu is powerful and mean. He uh, points to the, the remaining statues and to the font. Jarvu... Jarvu, come and take the soldiers here. Shit. What's wrong? Jarvu took these soldiers. He took them? Jarvu, so this creature was made by the wizard that made this place. He made him and some of his people fight in the arena that we fought Jarvu in. And the wizard. But now that Jarvu is free, he pretty much rules this area and is, I guess, wreaking havoc. Hmm. How did Jarvu get in here? He's, like, big. Do you think he could transform into a human like that other guy? It could possibly be. Hmm. Ask him how Jarvu looks. Like, does he just have a dragon form or can he transform into a human? Okay. I ask him if Jarvu has a human form or if he's only a dragon. He nods his head very quickly when you mention uh, a human form. Oh. Okay. So confirming? Mm hmm. So, so confirming that he has a human form? Yes. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like we're a little bit in over our heads. Are we? Well, I mean, oh, if, God. This, if this guy can change, that means that he's also capable of magic. Yeah. Well, what does he look like in his human form? He's big and tall and powerful, and his eyes burn like fire. Would that make him like a dragonborn, or what would you classify that as, Manny? Well, um... He could have, like, ascended. <laughs> like, figuring out puzzle possibly to get him stronger. Hmm. Or possibly getting something that gives him magical abilities. I'm not really sure. Could I do any sort of, like, check or anything like that to maybe find an origin of maybe, like, dragons knowing magic? Uh, that would be either Arcana or History for you. Can I do a check, too? I would say Arcana. Or not Arcana, uh, History for you. Okay. Not bad, 19? 17 for me. For Arcana. Um, you both, from, like, just what notes out there in the world there are of dragons from the past... Ancient dragons are able to shape change just naturally. Mm. So it it would just be a possibility that he's just able to take on whatever form he wants, like whatever race he wants to. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, it's big concern. <laughs> big concern. Um well, anything else you guys want to ask him? Yeah, where did he come from? Can we take him back home? Right, that might be hard for me to get him back home. Why? Can I have a, well, we have a set amount of people. Oh. Yeah. That's kind of why I was hoping not <laughs> to make any friends down here, unfortunately. Because <laughs> I cannot... That, that's how the magic works, unfortunately. Um, How many people can you teleport? Um, I I can wait here. And you can take him home and you can come back and pick me up. I'm looking at spell real quick. <laughs> uh, find, find number. Uh, eight, eight willing creatures uh, I can take. So... That's my apologies. And 
I wouldn't want to leave you behind, Roshin. I'd probably leave Garrus, maybe, or Tagoro, <laughs> along with another group, but now we're, like, splitting. So if we're counting all of you, we have Roshin, Koth, Manny, Feora, Garrus, Tagoro, Rorn. That's actually one, two, that is three, seven. four, five, six. That's seven people. Okay. No more <laughs> friends. <laughs> <laughs> It's not wow. my fault we that I knew he it. was friendly. <laughs> we, wow. If we can actually pull this off, that'd be funny. <laughs> <laughs> so the the next creature I throw at you guys, Manny's just gonna be like, nope, sorry, we can't nope. be friends. Not even trying to talk to you. <laughs> help those who help themselves. Yeah, is there anything else we're to talk to this guy about? Uh, yeah, I have a couple questions, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so... Is this thing like genetically made? Like, is this like a spell or like? He said that the wizard took him from his home. It's either from a spell or really messed up experimenting. I've heard of kind of magic like this, and if you experiment with it, it, it like morphs. So, do you think creatures. he was like a normal person before? It's possible. Could you ask him? Were you a normal human before? Not to be offensive. No <laughs> 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 room. Okay. <laughs> um. Let's see. You remember always being what you are now. He. Let's see. He nods his head. Yes. He says, "Crunch and friends were from." Uh, necropolis deep deep underground and worked as slaves for the matriarchs hmm. that doesn't sound like a very good home so what do you want to do now would you like to stay here or if you had a chance to get out of here would you take it Crunch can go home? But only Crunch. Okay. With us. Okay. Crunch would like to leave. <laughs> Do you know what's in the area of lava? Jarvu. That's what I thought. Dun dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else in there? We might have to go through there. Why? I mean... I just feel like we have to, in a way, to get through this. Uh, I mean, if... <laughs> I mean, it's up to you guys. I can try right now. Yeah. Get right out right now. Don't have to go to the lava to mess with Jarvu. The thing is, I'm pretty sure, like, this is me out of character. I'm pretty sure we're going to have to face Jarvu later if we don't now. <laughs> and he'll probably Absolutely. be stronger later. Absolutely. He already Whoa. has like half of a stone yeah. army on his side, so. But so will we, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. We we might be better equipped for this because I don't think we are right now. Yeah. I just feel right now, if we go into that lava pit, we might see him. And if we face him, we will probably lose, maybe. Do we have a way to contact the blue dragon? Why would you want to talk to him? <laughs> Why not have Blue Dragon fight Red Dragon? Oh my god. But I can't get the Blue Dragon here. Garrus, <laughs> Garrus just thinks for a second and he's just but like... he's like at the Magic Yeah, that would be a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> that would be a great idea, actually. And he's our friend. And I kicked his ass once. That's true. And he's in like the Super Magic place. I mean, at that rate, why don't we just ask the crystal dragon to come help us? There's a crystal what? dragon? It's technically, Io is not a crystal dragon. She just took on the appearance of a crystal dragon during a different time. Well, how, does Garrus know that? No! So I'm he just calling it crystal dragons? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. How many people do you have that can plane shift? Eight. I can only take eight. How many do we have all together, everyone? Eight, Eight, including our new friend. And I can send a message pretty much anywhere. 
And that's what we bards do. You know, we're, we're pretty cool sometimes. Pretty cool. But yes, I can pretty much talk to anybody at any time, anywhere. I could literally send a message to Fitzpark, to the White Tower. So theoretically, you could contact Rizel at the White Tower if you wanted to. I could literally talk to Jarvu. But what I'm saying is, if the White Tower had measures to surpass a blue dragon, wouldn't it stand to reason that they have things that could surpass or, uh, that big word? Um, subdue? Subdue the red dragon. <laughs> God. I mean, just... theoretically, maybe. But then again, Rizal was just a regular blue dragon. We're talking a ancient red dragon. Yeah, and Rizal also went willingly. Okay, but here's the thing, too. Somehow, the wizard that owned this area captured Jarvu, remember? He was in that little red crystal thing. Yeah. If we could get well, one of those things before facing Jarvu, and instead of fighting him, trap him in that dimension again. So you just need to go to the nearest off. Pokey store and buy yourself. Right. I feel <laughs> like there's a Professor yeah. Oak or something yeah. around here. <laughs> Crunch is, are you also known as Professor Oak? <laughs> But, well, no, I'm thinking maybe Io might be able to help us with that because the White Tower was kind of made for dragons. At least training dragons. So maybe there's something there that we can get to prepare ourselves. Well, what I'm gathering from this conversation is that we should co confront Jarvu and then leave? And then go to the White Tower and see if we can capture him and bring him back to the living world. I'm thinking we set up the dome in the lava place secret where no one can see us. I can make us really quiet too before we go in there like I did before we came down here. Then while we're in the lava pit area, I can send Kel around to check up area to get the lay of the land so that we can get an advantage. You know, you're all laughing at me. Kel is a useful item, okay? Yeah, I can tell I can tell he's really useful when you describe him as an item. I don't. <laughs> Manny, I fucking love you. I also have this pocket watch. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and the ring. Yeah, and the ring. <laughs> I haven't really figured out the ring. And I have a pocket watch gives me a map of anywhere it, I am. It does. Uh huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when I get to the lava place, how good would it be to have an advantage of knowing where we are, like the map of the location where we are? That would be a good I mean, advantage to have. Yeah. That's a good point. Does, does it show, like, every little uh, thing on it? Like, would we know where Jar Jarvu is, essentially, or is it just the map? I, I don't think we could know where Jarvu is. I don't think it's a locator. <laughs> it's not like yeah, that, but it shows, like, the general area. Mm -hmm. like, DM, how detailed would it be? I'm sure Manny had poked around with it. Um, Let me pull it up real quick again. I mean, can't you just use it right now? I need to pull up its stats real fast. Oh, okay. Yeah, it has uh, on its own violation, um, violation certainly, and the item records a map of the environments that you are exploring. It can magically project it so you can see it as a bonus action. So it doesn't really go into detail, but... Is it as we travel, or is it just like we're there and uh, it's like a big map? Yeah, I assume it's like a GPS sort of. Like, I wouldn't say it shows the whole entirety of the area, but maybe like a good section. Yeah. I'd say it would show you uh, within, I think, 50 feet. Let me pull up. Oh, hang on. Sorry. I'm scrolling to get to the stats just so I make sure I give you yeah, the right no worries. information. And would it be like kind of detailed where it showed like topographical where it's like mountains maybe dips yeah i would say it will show you um uh, like the general vicinity around you in detail and it will also 
all the exits around you. It won't show you like living people or anything or living creatures of any yeah, kind. I, yeah, I assume that cool. Yeah. But still, like that's great. Yeah. So are we going into the scary place? And then like figuring out what's there and then leaving the scary place to come back to the scary place? Or are we just going to the scary place? Um, as you guys are talking, overhead, the ground rumbles and oh. shudders and, like, bits of debris and rock fall from the ceiling around you guys. And, uh, you hear a loud roar coming from above somewhere. Oh, oh shit. Oh. And Crunch quickly backs away into his little crevice. <laughs> And starts no, 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 no. Come, come, come here, come here. We took too long. We gotta go. Okay. We're not going up there now, are we? No, we're leaving now. Okay. Well, this is up. Manny's ready to oh. plane shift. Okay. Tagore's like, sure we are, bud. Wink. <laughs> oh. Oh, no. Um. All right. I... So what's happening? We all gotta link hands. Yeah. Okay. So I hold out my hand to Tagoro. Grab on, please. Mm-hmm. Can't yeah. fight him. We're not ready. No, I grab on. I just Tagoro's like, oh yeah, we're totally gonna get to leave. Are are the Orc brothers with us? They're upstairs. Oh my god. Yeah, that's true. We did leave them upstairs because one of them was passed out. Let's go. Run. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, we run upstairs. Oh shit. Uh, come on, friend. We gotta go. <laughs> and... We'll call it right there. <laughs> wow. 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 Oof. Cool. So. <laughs> boys take us so long to wake up. Healed him up and everything. He's just napping at this point. Listen, <laughs> he hit his head really hard, okay? Taking a long rest. That's like super bad to be out that long after a head injury like (laughs) from a medical standpoint that's super bad he's gonna have some sort of brain damage like super bad (laughs) wow so i'm just saying it's like super bad it's fine it's totally fine Thanks for joining us for the Arius Adventures here on Party Advantage. Come join our community over on our Discord channel and hang out with the cast and fellow fans of the show by following the link in the episode description. You can also find us on our very own website, www.partyadvantagepod.com, where you can find cast and character bios, along with updates for special announcements and events. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter using at Party Advantage for fun posts and episode updates. Lastly, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you stay current with all of our episodes on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Come back in two weeks for more Aries adventures as the Ram Pack continues their journey. Will the party find the advantage on their next encounter? Only one way to find out. See you then.